Welcome back to 7,000 Volts, Living an Electrified Life. Today's topic, Mastering the Fundamentals of Life in it in Business. Today, I have a special guest, Sanjur. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. So it ties in uh, the, the, the topic having you on today because we're, you know, you understand business, you understand family, having four kids. <laughs> so that's, you know, the fundamentals of life is just that. Number one for me is family and kids. So tell us your story. Tell, tell us how you find the balance between uh, business, work, and family. You know, it's a constant journey, right? It's a thing. First of all, thank you for having me on the show. And I, uh, when when you asked me if I can share uh, with you some of my uh, pasts and some of the experience and where we're going and what I'm heading, uh, it was a very much a ma major honor to me because uh, I think um, my wife is encouraging me to write a book, uh, kind of like the ones coming up with you. And I think uh, it's going to be pretty exciting for people to hear and read the story of yours. Uh, and that's where I wanted to... Uh, you know, just come here and just share some of my stories. And you asked me a question about fundamentals of life. Um, I think it's a constant journey, right? I think a lot of people um, tend to, to look at the past and think, okay, I need to find myself. I need to find what is my God-given gift, um, what I can be good at. I feel like that's the wrong outlook on life, right? You got to look at more of a, what can I do better and what I, how can I recreate myself? recreate myself and that means a better father, a better citizen, a better athlete, a better um, business owner, a better employee, right? Um, there's always constantly you can improve yourself and it all takes with priorities, right? How do I, you asked me a question, how do I master all that? Because when I'm listing all these things, it can get a little bit overwhelming when somebody's watching this podcast, right? Oh my gosh, I have these things, this, this and that. All comes down to priorities. At the end of the day, you need to learn how to say no to certain things. Yes. And understand what are your priorities. For me, my wife and I, it's always been our Heavenly Father, um, the country, family, and then job or a business or business and a job, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and because we understand the, pro, uh, the, the we understand uh, that you can, that everybody get 24 hours in a day. Yes. Everybody. Um, the, what you do with those 24 hours is the difference, the outcome that you're going to get, um, that you're going to get two, three, four, five, six, seven years from now, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how we, we run with it. My wife and I are very, very uh, strategic about our calendar on a daily and a weekly and a yearly basis. Hope that answered your question. Yes. It, it's funny that you, uh, that, that you bring up about creating. So that's one of, in fact, I have a, a painting in my office and it's one of my sayings. Life is not about finding yourself. It's about creation. It's about creating yourself. Always. People constantly look for something that they haven't created yet. Mm -hmm. And they're living a the life that they already created for themselves, bad, good, or indifferent. So, uh, it, you know, when people find themselves in certain places in life where life then turned into a horror story and they can't get to where they think they want to be, my my suggestion is always that's like you exactly where you create yourself to be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what do you mean? It's like your life is what you were spoken into exist right years ago. That's right. So if, if you want a better life for yourself, you have to create that life for yourself. You know, as an athlete for yourself, you was a tennis player. Tell us. Yeah. Tell you, us. you know, that's actually, um, I'm glad you brought it up, right? Tennis piece. I'm, I'm a, from a third world country called Uzbekistan. If you guys don't know where it's at, it's former Soviet Union, former Russia, when used to be 15 countries together. It's the south side of Russia. And I ended up playing tennis, and I was one of the top athletes. I uh, did very well. My dad, actually, former ex uh, professional soccer player, so it's like it's you know it's always been in our DNA to play sports. So obviously, we picked up tennis. Uh, I was blessed enough to have some amazing sponsor to send me to play here at IMG Academy down in Bradenton, Florida. If you guys never heard of it, just Google it. It's state of the art facility. All the top pro players came out of there: Williams sisters, Andre Agassi, and that's. Uh, big conglomerate about nine different sports you have all the top division one uh football recruits come out of there right so anyways uh talking about recreating yourself um i came to the united states when i was 15 years old i mean just put yourself in your shoes if you have children 15 years old you're sending your son away three thousand plus thousand what 24 hour flight away distance to play tennis 
You're not gonna see your son for 15, uh, for 12 months straight. That was my story for three years straight. I came here to play pro. That was my dream. Uh, through injuries, I ended up losing some of my sponsors and then just, you know, I found myself at 18 years old. Do I pursue to go professionally or do I pursue taking a college route and play for school here? And I chose to play for school in the United States because that gave me the opportunity to get a visa. Otherwise, my other option would have been going home and hoping I can make pro, right? Even though I had a, a very low professional ranking, but still, it, it was there was a hope there, right? And talking about recreating yourself, <clears throat> imagine me, right? That, that's all I knew. That was my vision. I eat, drink, sleep, pro tennis, pro tennis. All my friends end up playing pro. I, I can list the names. All of them are had a successful careers. And I had to find myself how to create myself playing college tennis. That was probably one of my hardest things to do. Uh, but that was a very important stepping stone to, to develop a mindset where I didn't just kind of fell down and just destroyed myself. Or how, whatever you, keep in mind, guys, English is my third language. So please forgive me if I make some of the comments. You're like, what? Mm -hmm. um, I found myself all of a sudden, okay, I had to find a way how to, okay, what's my next step? Are you going to? How, what are you going to take from the past life? You embrace all the skills, all the mindset that you developed. Work hard. Don't give up. Look up 10, 15 years ahead. Don't just look at what can happen tomorrow based on the efforts you put in. And that's the mindset I end up taking into my next next journey, right? In college, in owning a business, in starting a job career, and having a family. Because I feel like those are the foundational habits help me tremendously to grow through the life and constantly keep recreating myself, if that makes sense. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, it, it, you keep saying mindset. That's, we talk about that a lot on this oh, podcast because it's, it's everything because without the correct mindset, it's, you have no control of where you're going. No. So if you have a mindset of I'm not good enough, then guess what? For you, you're not good enough. If you have the mindset Oh, it's hard. The country's bad, and this. Then, for you, that's your true reality. Yeah. And mindset is what takes you to another level, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. So when we say mindset, people are like, "Oh, I got a mindset." Hey, there's always going to be a mindset. Always. It's what is your intention on mindset? Because that's where you go in life. If your intention is, is to be successful, then you're going to be successful. If your intention is is to be, um a basketball player, a swimmer, it's going to get you closer and closer to your goal. 100%. And it, it, it's that, that outlook with that mindset. Sometimes people, you're not going to get it 100 every time. It's not going to be perfect. Um, in high school, I played football. Who was my favorite sport? Basketball was. And I played because my friends and that I grew up in the neighborhood played. I see. And, so even though I was pretty, I was pretty good at it. I didn't like it. Like I love watching football, but playing, I wasn't. I didn't like getting hit. I'm sorry, I, I didn't like getting blindsided hit. As a receiver, I, I didn't. I didn't like getting like I when they. I it was a quick slant or or a passing uh, play that caused me to go across the middle. I'm jotting across. I'm not running full speed. <laughs> I, I got hit so hard one time. I'm like, man, screw football. I'm like, like who signed up? For That's this? a wild sport. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll be honest. With you. Kudos to you if you played that sport. You know, and, and I like hitting people. I, I listen. I like I like the running plays because I get the I get <laughs> I get the blindside somebody. I get to lay them out, and I didn't like taking those hits. So my mind wasn't there uh, to become a professional athlete uh, or go to the next level playing football, basketball, or. I, I did. Uh, I, I played a little basketball in college here locally at St. Pete College. And after a while, my mindset wasn't there. I didn't like running up and down. So I had to be like, oh, you're tall. You should be a professional basketball player. I'm like, you be a professional basketball player. You know how much running up and down the right. You have to right. That's right. You have to have the mindset for that. You know, I don't mind running, going to get my exercise in, but it's at my case. I don't have to try to outrun the next guy on the court. And that's what it comes down to. That's why they say a lot of sports is a young man's game. So, you know, you respect and honor those guys that's playing it longer than the average. Uh, 
like the Tom Brady, sort of Ron James is like, man, they're doing that at 40. Like, good luck. Yeah, it's like more power to them. But it comes down to that mindset. 100%. You know, if I can comment on that, having kids now on my own, uh, my wife and I are very intentional about making sure they're playing um, as many sports as they would like, but at the same time, strategically, we're putting them in a sports, kind of start guiding them to sports they're going to like to play long term. Mm -hmm. Listen, if, I, if they become professional tennis players, golfers, awesome. I'm blessed, right? That's not my goal. What my goal is, I want to use these sports as a platform to teach them that mindset, right? Yeah. To teach them that, hey, if you start something, you finish. If you start something, you do it long enough. Like example, we played tennis yesterday with my four-year-old and there was a time, it was super hot at two o'clock PM and he got to point, daddy, I'm tired, I'm done. And I was like, no, 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 no. Let's hit a goal. Let's hit 10 balls across the net, you know? And then you don't quit. And then you're gonna go and take a break and we're done, right? I just use that as an opportunity to sit down and teach him, no, no, son. You don't just quit because you're tired, right? You gotta have a goal, you achieve the goal and then you earn it and then you stop. I think that was a major progression for me to help him to understand that in their mindset. And that's where I feel like where I, instead of, and if you're a parent, somebody's watching as a parent with young kids, you know, obviously we're talking about, like if I ask you, hey, LJ, if you, if you take the mindset you have now and you go play basketball in college, which is safe to say, you'll be like, man, I wish I had this mindset, right? You're probably thinking that, right? And I feel like a lot of athletes or a lot of people that reached a certain excellence level in their 20s and 30s, they look back in their 50s and like, and I wish I had that mindset. I would have been such a better tennis player. Such a, I got to make sure I instill that in my children. Well, I just want to make sure people understand it takes time. You, you know, how, my question is, how can I be an asset to my children right now and somebody else, young athlete, that I can teach them that mindset but also embrace the journey mm -hmm. that they're going through? They're going through, like you just mentioned, right? I don't want to go run. How can I be a partner in their life to help them to understand, hey, you don't understand this now, but you got to go through that. So in the future, when you do go through these tough times, when you actually reach a certain level of success, you'll be like, man, I'm glad somebody pushed me. Yeah. You know? A absolutely. So as a speaker, it's twofold. As a speaker, I, I, when, I when I travel to speak at an event or something, mm -hmm. I enjoy very much to do with it. My mindset is to do it. Like, you're not afraid to speak in front of all those people? Absolutely not. They say, uh, <laughs> you, you fall in love with what you do and you never work a day in your life. Well, as a business owner and a certified arborist, of the owner of a tree company, people are like, do you still, are you still in the field? I'm like, absolutely. I look like, I'm afraid of heights. I don't see how you do it. I love flying my bucket 60, 70 feet in the air. That's wild. Like, they, it's my mindset. Like, it's not even work. It's like, I love just being able to be a voice for the trees to 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 trim them and prune them the right way or the tree needs to come out and it's sitting over a, a house and there's a it's a non-movable target is what we call it like a house is a non-movable target huh. and so either you bring in a crane to, to help assist or you just do a rigging job to ensure that you're not going to drop a branch to somebody's roof it's a mindset it's like i'm really good at what i do uh, when I was electrocuted, that's where we got that name, 7,000 volts, living an electrified life from. I wasn't that good at what I did. I just did it. And I, I wasn't ex as, as excited I, as I am today. I just did it. But through the electrocution, through those past mistakes, I became the ultimate pro at what, that, what I do. Yeah, but you went, see, you went through that, right? Yes. Right, LJ, you, you went through that journey. Mm -hmm. There were times where you didn't want to do it, but Absolutely. you kept doing it. Yes. You kept doing, and all of a sudden, you start mastering some of the skills, re do, redesigning yourself in life. All of a sudden, you started to see, oh, wow, I actually starting to fall in love with that because I'm not, I'm, I'm a lot better in what I do. I'm not an average anymore because nobody's going to enjoy average anything, right? It's like saying, let's go watch average player playing basketball. No, you're going to go watch NBA playing basketball because they're exceptional. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what's happening to you, right? Like you, you kind of took... You went through that state in mind that it was just, uh, I don't feel like doing it, but then it just flipped. Yeah, absolutely. Now, it's, a, it's a joy. I don't have to, nobody has to say, hey, you got to get up to work today. Hey, you got to get to You're excited. Office. You're yeah. excited. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's what makes it the journey worth 
fighting for it. That's what makes Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And that's why we're doing this. This is why I do this, to, to share that journey with other people, let you know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. That's what, there's no train in it. Because somebody said that to me one time, I think it was my godfather. I said, man, there's light, you know, mm -hmm. my growth part. I said, man, there's light. I, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And he said, yeah, but is there a train in it? <laughs> I, like, oh, I like that. I like I that. Like, man, I didn't see that one coming. Oh, uh, that's funny. I like that. I like that. Yes. Yeah, so, it, it, and that's what we mean. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Then you got to put that in. <laughs> and there's no train on the other end. Because you can see that tunnel and you see the wrong light and it, it can, it, 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 it won't end well. Yeah. And so we keep moving forward. We create, as creators, we get to create the the ending. We need to, we get to create the middle yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You're saying you talk about continue recreating yourself, right? I feel like my wife and I, we caught ourselves in... So I'm going to speak for myself, actually, because uh, I, I keep finding myself every, I'd say, 10 to 15 years needing to recreate myself, right? Uh, it's going from being an athlete to owning a, uh, uh, starting a, corp a college and then from college to a successful job career, from job career to owning a 17 years of business and then had to mix through some tough choices, I uh, choose not to pursue the op uh, in the entrepreneurship world and finding myself in uh, working for another individual, right? And I'm loving every second of it, but I know um, the, 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 it's not the end. It's not the end. And I'm recreating myself again in the industry I'm in right now, right? And uh, my wife and I have always been um, uh, individuals that want to stretch ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's funny that we're talking about the topic is recreating yourself. We're recreating ourselves being parents. Mm -hmm. yep. I feel like it's the hardest job. Oh, man. Yeah. It's the most important it, job. It, like, exactly. Yeah. It's the most important because you get to influence the life that you uh, experienced into your children. And we're in a position, yes, we could have just owned other businesses, pursue some incredible uh, opportunities, but we, we made a conscious decision. We're in a season of life right now. We have a four-year-old three-year-old two-year-old we have a newborn in december oh man it's we're in a thick witness we we just feel like you hear people say oh they they don't have to remember everything uh i believe in subconscious mind records yeah. everything it does you know you, you say enough you're ugly you're ugly you're ugly your subconscious mind eventually will spew that information and think that you're ugly right i believe the foundational principles right now that we're instilling in them at first what first five to ten years is so critical for who they're going to become in the future. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's not easy. We made few sacrifices to be available to them. And I believe that's going to be, and again, uh, we will see in 15 years, right? If we made the right choice or not. Oh, a absolutely. Man, when it comes to uh, our children, it's like, it's it, for, for those who believe, that's, it's your greatest asset. And some people look at their kids as burdens. No like, way. I'm like, wow. Like, I, I have to, I have to, literally bite my tongue at times when you see some of the stuff out in public the way picture you your yeah. child or leave them in the hot car or something while they go shop and it's like i said lord give me the script to keep my mouth closed. yeah <laughs> you know to to see somebody dress a child down in such a manner to it's like really you got to talk to that child like that and prioritize when, right when you just you learn that you know, you can't stick your notes and everybody's business and you just hark. You pray. Yeah. Pray for that child. Yeah. So Lord, give that child Amen. the uh the patience and the strength that they need to move forward. A part of the fundamentals of life is just finding finding that path, like eating the right food, um, drinking the right fluids, and you, you know, putting the right food in, whether it's physical or spir uh, or spiritual. And one of the spiritual foods I like to eat it says scripture uh, Ecclesiastics 3 1 through 8 it says to everything there's a season a time for every purpose under the heaven a time to be born a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck up that which has been planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones. Together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing.
a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rent, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Now, when we read scripture biblically, I'm going to say this because there's a part in this is a time to kill. I don't want people to get the wrong message. Don't read scripture with your natural physical eye because you're probably not going to understand it. You really have to grow as spiritual. To understand that, yeah. To understand that when you say a time to kill, it's not time for you to go out there to kill somebody. It's it could be it's you're going fishing and you have to kill that fish to maybe eat or mm-hmm. you're at war and it doesn't make it okay to kill because there's never really okay in my book to kill but we're just going biblical so i just want to put that out there because oh i, I listened to lj on this podcast and he said it's time to kill no i did not these times you gotta cover yourself unfortunately <laughs> you know it is what it is i get it i get it yeah, yeah. but that's important because there's a time and place for everything 100 percent you know, we, we, we don't, we're not, we're not born running, running marathons. We're born as infants. So we have to be taught and we learn how to do things. It's, and some people, they're fortunate. Like my kids are spoiled. I say, I always tell them, I say, you guys are so spoiled. You don't know how good you have it because they don't share the same struggles I shared when I was growing up, which is priceless. Yes. And so, and, and I'm honored that I can give them a life that I always wanted for myself. Yeah. It's, it's through creation that we're able to do it and continue to try to teach them. Uh, the Bible says raise up a child in the way they should grow when they get older, they want to park. And if they did, they could hit them at the product of the sun, they can find their way back. Yeah. So what's your take on when your children, like it, you, you get the sport, you're teaching them sports right away, which is phenomenal. I do the same thing with my kids. So you know, my Michael, he does three different sports. Well, David, he's stuck on one sport. He wants to do the second sport, but he's doing baseball and possibly soccer. Michael does baseball, basketball, soccer, and he plays piano. Wow. And my oldest daughter, she's she's now doing volleyball. She does piano and flute. And, and my, my little Gabby, she's just my little gymnastics. And even though she likes sports, her sport now is gymnastics. And my oldest son, he's already graduated, but he did basketball and football when he was younger as well. Wow. So it's phenomenal when you can watch life with these kids and watch the direction through the way we train them. And we take that scripture to the time, you know, it's a time where you have to hmm. tap that bottom when they fall out of mind, they create that muscle Remember, Hey, listen, daddy was, a, or mommy was angry with me because I did something they didn't want me to do because they can't for C and don't tip, don't. And, and so it, it's funny. I, I, I tell my wife, she's like, oh, he, I said, don't run over there like that. Let, let him touch, let, he touched that stove one time, he ain't touching it. He wasn't touching it. And sometimes you have to refrain back. You say, you know what? This ain't gonna kill him, but it's gonna get his attention. Uh-huh. And then when it happens and they're screaming bloody murder, like, I, listen, I tried to warn you from this. That's right. I hate you know. Yeah, you know, you asked me what's my take on that specific scripture. Actually, I believe um, it's very accurate. Well, let's say it's, it's written right by somebody. I'm not gonna. It is accurate. I, as of course, it's accurate. Um, I've experienced that personally. That there's time for everything, right? I'm a Type A personality. I want to take over 50 other things at the same time. I'm, and if you tell me I cannot do it, I will by default. I can see myself uh, willing to do it to prove you wrong. And especially running a 17-year-old business that was very successful at some point. Uh, and through some decisions, we had to make a decision to let go. Um, we are very blessed that our Heavenly Father forced us to do that. And I'm saying forced us because He knew I'm going to be stubborn enough to continue pursuing it because that decision was made two years ago. And crazy enough, LJ, um, talking about that is time for everything. I never been so spiritually grounded and my foundation relation with my Heavenly Father has been so amazing the last two years. Uh, through a lot of doubts, I developed that. I thought I had that relationship. No way. Last two years probably been the most amazing foundation I've been developed. That now you take that and you add my business IQ, uh, the network I have, the experience I have, the persistency, the mindset. 
uh, marry that together, sky's the limit. So that's why you're talking about there's a time, who well, Sanjar, when are you going to start running that race? There's a time for that. The time what God wants us to do right now is we need to raise our children properly. Yes. You, we still need to create success. My wife is about to launch another company. Uh, you know, prayed about it. Yeah, that's the right time. But there's a time for everything. Absolutely. And unless, and I'm going to speak personally for me, if I am not prioritizing my development of that relationship with my Heavenly Father and me personally, I find myself running my 50 miles per hour, 50 different directions without understanding, hey, there's a time for everything. Mm -hmm. Just let me help you, but there's a time for everything. And if somebody is watching this webcast and like, well, it's a little bit spiritual, right? Uh, this is a little bit, uh, I'm just telling my story, but you got to find what keeps you accountable mm -hmm. to find whether it's a mentor, whether it's somebody to help you to find your timing for every new project or task you will do in your life. You made a comment that you have, your daughter's playing this, your son is playing this. There's a time for that. Mm -hmm. You're in a season, right? And you make this a priority because it's your family is a priority. You're not going to get that second shot 10 years from now. Yeah. And so it's funny that you say that because the only time that I'm going to miss Michael or Davis or Olivia's or one of my children's uh, sporting games or events that they have is because there's two going on at one time. Like Michael and David in baseball games, sometimes they overlap with each other. And so me and the wife are split up. She'll take she's like, well, I missed Michael's game last week. So I'm going to go to his game and go to David's. And so, so we'll switch. But I won't miss two weeks in a row. So if they game run together at the same time because they're on different teams, then I'll switch and I'll go to uh, Michael's and she'll go to David. <laughs> it's the only reason I'm going to miss it. Hey, but there were times when you were, when they were very little, mm -hmm. you were focused on growing this company. Your tree business, right? Yes. And you did miss some times, but but there was a time for that. Yes. The time for that to set yourself up foundationally yes. so you can be at every baseball game, right? Uh, every person's journey is different, right? For us, as yes. we are been blessed enough to build a company that allowed my wife to walk away from her job at 29 years old. You know, we she did not want to stop working, but she made a conscious decision. It's time for us to be in with the world, what it's at right now. Our children need parents that understand certain things that we can instill in them instead of somebody else instilling the values and mindset into our children. That's important to us, right? It is. And uh, we're at that time, the season. So eventually when they are bigger, like your kids, I could say the same thing looking back 20 years from now. And I maybe missed one game, my son's big. Because that was another. Like that's, that is my daily prayer for yeah. saying that. Yeah. So now, when, now so I, I just want to clear that up. Like, when I say miss a game, like, intentionally, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm not going to that game. Now, there has been work circumstances where I get called out Absolutely. to work. So I don't want people that's like, oh, he's perfect. No, I'm not perfect. And there's times I'm going to miss a game, but I'm not, it's not planned. Like, I can be on my way to a game and something happens or I get called out in it. Your son knew. Your son yes. knew you are you are prioritizing his game. Yeah. Yes, there'll be flexibilities. Yes, that he you're not gonna be able to show up. But he knew that yeah. dad is prioritizing my game. Yeah, but vice versa with the girls and stuff. So mm -hmm. I just want to be clear again with my listeners and and people that are watching or just listening that my intentions is to be a present parent. To be a that's the, that's the key, yes. man. That you hit it. You hit it in the nail. Present parent. Yes. We were at the pool yesterday with my wife, and we had tennis, we had golf, we had, we went to a birthday party, we were, I went to the pool with my children, and my wife and I were like, man, we're looking at other parents, they're not present parent. Yeah. Present, me, yeah, like being aware, like teach them, being, t and they want to be with us. Because mm -hmm. um, there were still some parents in the pool that's just like kids just there and not judging them. Please don't misunderstand me. We just wanted to be, again, we want to instill in our life uh, kids that want to be with us when they're 20, 50, 30, like different ages. They want to be like, I want to be with my mom and dad. I have this few people in my life through my previous business that I've seen that have just present parent. Kids want to be with mom and dad. They want to build a business with mom and dad. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it's fixed. That's our time. For Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you being on the show, man. Uh, your, your words of wisdom was insightful, and hopefully it's going to be able to help somebody out there. I mean, Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.
please remember to like, comment, and subscribe and be on the lookout for my book that'll be coming out pretty soon. Can't wait. You guys have a great day and God bless.